fell, you know, and I'm like, well, it all goes back into the company. Yeah, so, totally. <laughs> you got to keep mm-hmm. the engine going and maybe, you know, maybe if we're lucky someday, but I think what we've been able to do is create a lifestyle for ourselves that allows us to live more fully. And I, totally. I don't think you could ever put a price tag that. Absolutely. And I think so many people live with regret in their lives. Like, why didn't I try that? Why didn't I do that? It's now too late. You know, so I think I, I did it at a time where I could still do it, you know, and, and I say, you know, financially, it's been tough, but you're always building, you're always sowing seeds, and you never know where the next opportunity is going to come from. And right now, you know, because of what we're going through, I'm having to pivot um, into, you know, I still, still have work with the label, which is all great, but that's not a hundred percent of my life. You know, I have other projects that I do, um, to, to fill up the, uh, to fill up the rest of my slate. And I'm working on something now that I'm, I'm really excited about, you know, it's one of those things where, wow, I could actually do this from home. I would never have to travel. It's something I could do. I, it could keep going well into an, in, into retirement, and I could actually build courses around this. And you know, it didn't occur to me to even do it until the pandemic, because what happened was it, uh, not. Re- I mean, it's not it's not fleshed out enough yet. Yeah. But basically, it's it's helping artists. Uh, sell and just maintain better relationships with their customers. It's, it's yeah. really about the D to C business in the music industry. And I saw, cause there were a couple acts who I've worked with, who we've been really carefully and meticulously building their audiences and, and, and really nurturing that, that direct consumer relationship. And it paid off. Yeah, you know, and as soon as it hit, I have I work with. There's one artist I work with who uh, was about to go on tour, had ordered all of his merchandise for the tour. The it was the 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 next day, you know, it was like tour canceled. He's sitting there with all this merch that has dates on the back. You know, the whole yeah. tour. It's not stuff you can reuse, but he had this he had this way to reach his audience, which we developed. And he sold out of all the merchandise in two days mm. online. Wow. So, yeah. And I just, it, I, it clicked. And I went, wow, that's really powerful. So powerful. You know? And there are a lot of acts who are just not set up to do it. You know, they're sitting there really like, what do we do? And they're, they're not in a position really to act. I mean, we've got to think about evergreen revenue streams, right? Mm-hmm. Passive revenue that no matter what the situation is, you can create an environment that people will still be able to, and I think connect with you. You know, I think people, you know, I can only imagine the live music industry. I mean, we were supposed to go to a show and it got canceled, you know, um, right as everything was heating up. And I, I was telling my husband, I'm like, you know, I don't know when we'll see that refund because I can only imagine they are inundated. Yeah. Oh, there's no cancellations. Everything's just postponed. <laughs> well, Don't say can. No one says cancel. Nobody says cancel. Is that what's happening? No, that's a bad word. We don't say cancel. We post. We say postpone. Ah, uh, I see. I hang on to your ticket. You'll be okay. Hang use. on to Have you ever wondered, is rinsing my produce with the water that comes out of the sink that I don't even drink enough to really clean it? Well, then you're one of the smartest people I know. Because you're absolutely right. It's not enough. That's why we created the only all-natural and patented line of food wash and wipes. And it's called Eat Cleaner. It's tasteless, odorless, and lab tested. And it removes up to 99.9% of the residue that water can't, including pesticides, wax, soil, and junk that can carry bacteria that can really make you sick. Plus, we formulated it to help extend the shelf life of your fresh produce too, and that'll save you money. When your berries are lasting up to 10, 12 days, you know that's a good thing. It helps your produce last up to five times longer using a natural blend of fruit acids and antioxidants. 
So there's no chemicals. It's just clean eating fun. And this can help save your family an average of over $500 per year. Make it easy on yourself, reduce waste, and get that fruit and veggies into your body, where it's going to do you a lot of good and not in the trash. Check us out, eatcleaner.com, or head to our Amazon store at amazon.com forward slash eatcleaner. You know, we're seeing live shows streaming, you know, artists streaming mm-hmm. from their, yep. their living rooms and people getting involved in the cause. How yes. do you see the music industry? I see the music industry bringing a lot of relief to people despite the hit that they're taking. For sure. Yeah. There's, I think there's a lot of people find comfort in music. Absolutely. Which is one of the things I love about what I do is that you, you're, you're part of that, you know, you're part of delivering that to people. Yeah. And I think, um, I think for everybody listening, support your artists, you know, pay for music yeah. make sure that you <laughs> follow them and, and they're human beings too. Like, let them know if you're a fan, let them know you're there because that is what they live by. Right. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. They make music, but they make it for their listeners. Yeah. And it's a little tougher because, you know, the industry is really, you know, the live music industry is really driven by alcohol sales, right? That's, yes. that, that is the driver, right? So if you're, if you're playing clubs, the club brings you in, they take a very, you know, the, the margin that the club makes on the actual ticket sales is nothing compared to what they make at the bar. So right now, <laughs> there's no, there's no bar. There's no bar. There's no bar. And, you know, even with the bigger shows, you know, the money at arena shows is all in concessions and parking. So it's, you know, it's interesting to watch that where, you know, um, you know, so yeah, definitely. If you, if you see an artist up there, just throw them a buck, you know, anything. Yeah, it's, yeah anything. It's every little bit helps. So, so you made this this pivot in your career a few years ago and then something pretty major happened to you it it did um i got pretty sick (laughs) and uh uh i was it was three years ago it was uh january 2017 i had come down with something that was i was like wow i feel really sick i hadn't gotten the flu shot i get the flu shot every year Hmm. Right. I have asthma. So uh, my doctor says, get the flu shot every year. And, and for, for whatever reason, that season, I just had not gotten around to getting a flu shot. And so uh, my wife started feeling ill um, around third week of January and a couple and she went to the she went to the urgent care and they didn't really test. her. They said, oh, yeah, you probably have the flu. They, I think they put her on Tamiflu. And a couple days later, I started not feeling well. And I went down and they tested me for strep, which our son actually had strep throat at the time. So, you know, they tested my wife for strep. She was negative. They, they just assumed she had the flu. They tested me for strep. It came back negative. They assumed I had the flu. So I went on Tamiflu. Long story short, that was a Monday. Uh, Wednesday night, I remember posting on Facebook saying, this is the worst flu ever. Definitely go get your flu shot while you can. Uh, 8 a.m. the next morning, I was down on all fours, couldn't breathe. Wow. And uh, my wife happened to call a friend of hers who she hadn't talked, spoken to in a while, who was an ICU nurse, friend of hers, who, uh, you know, she was the only person she felt she could turn to. That friend happened to be five minutes away. She came over. She told my wife, said, call 911 right now. Wow. And so what had happened, long story short, I had gotten a strep infection that had gone crazy. It uh, got into my lungs. It was a strep A infection that got into my lungs that mutated, um, quickly took over my lung, uh, went into my bloodstream, and uh, I had heart failure, kidney failure. Uh, had I not, had my wife not gotten me to the hospital that day, I would have died that night. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I ended up being, I ended up, I was in the, uh, the ER, they couldn't get my blood pressure up no matter what they did. Uh, I was finally, I was admitted into the hospital. I was intubated and I was put into an, uh, put into an induced coma. Um, and yeah, I was in a coma for two and a half weeks, came out of it. Uh, this was a bizarre experience. Uh, I was in the hospital all told I was in the hospital for 35 days and the last eight or nine days was in rehab because when you're in bed that long, you, you're, you're, you get muscle atrophy. So I couldn't walk. I couldn't feed myself. 
Um, I couldn't, I couldn't grip a pencil. There were, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly. Um, like how, how did it accelerate that fast? I mean, I know you, I know you're a healthy guy. Yeah. No. Aside from having asthma, like you're, you're a picture of health. Like how did it accelerate like that? They don't really know. It just, it mutated. And what they think happened was that I did have some kind of virus as well. So I had a virus going, I had this bacterial infection that um, they, there's, there's usually, I can't remember what they said, but there's, there's two types of bacteria. It's usually one or the other. This one was both. Mm. And it was just, you know, it was just a, a, freak situation. And I was on, I was on a ventilator for a couple of weeks. So I know what that was like. Um, I was intubated. And then when I was up uh, and awake after the two and a half weeks, they, uh, you know, uh, cut my throat and uh, did it, did a tracheostomy and had a, had a tube going, a breathing tube going into my throat, mm-hmm. um, which took several weeks to close up. That was fun. Um, I can't yeah, it was, it was wild, but you know, and, and when they, when we went back and we, we, we went back about a month later to go visit all the doctors, you know, I was at two different hospitals and we went by to just bring gift baskets to say thank you. And I remember, well, I didn't really know the full gravity of what had happened. My, my wife didn't really fill me in on everything. She went through worse than I did because she was the one who had to deal with watching her husband not wake up for two weeks. Mm. And, you know, that was the hard part for me. I just slept through it. But then some of the realities started creeping in when, uh, you know, we went to the first uh, first ICU unit where I was and doctor looked at me and said, you know what, honestly, I gave you a 10% chance of living. Wow. And had you, li- and by the time you looked like you were going to come- pull through it, we, we figured you were going to be in the hospital for three months and then it would be a full year recovery. Well, I was in the hospital for 35 days. I was back working from home four days later. And uh, two weeks later, I was back coaching my son's little league team. So it was just, yeah, it was, it was determination to get well um, that, that really did it. But yeah, that was a, that was, that was, that was a tough one. I've always wanted to promise myself that I wouldn't make it, let that define my life but it's been hard not to. I'm also on top of it. I'm also a cancer survivor. I had, uh, went through, uh, cancer. I, I, uh, was diagnosed with cancer when I was, uh, 21 years old in college. Um, so yeah, yeah. So it was uh testicular cancer that had gone into my lymph nodes. And so I had three operations and 12 weeks of chemotherapy and I was good as new, but still, you know, um, a life altering experience. So I think when you combine all of that, the, the fact that I made the, the, the uh, career choices that I have, you know, really grateful for it. You know, I, I, because after, especially after my bout with sepsis, which what it, what, what it was when the whole body shuts down mm-hmm. um, is sepsis. You, you, everything's basically poisoned Especially in your heart. Your bloodstream. Yeah. Your heart and your kidneys stop. It's like this final, this, this final Hail Mary pass where your heart and your kidneys stop so that the bacteria can't reach your brain. That's what it's trying to do now. So one of the, if the bacteria reaches your brain, you're going to die. Um, your heart and kidneys stop functioning. You're going to die, but it's, it's like the body's last resort. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, had I not gone to the ER that day, I would not have been alive that night. It's hard to know what to listen to these days. Like mm-hmm. he, we're kind of, you know, at the time of this recording, we have been in kind of stay in, stay at home orders for about three weeks or so now, almost uh, four. Right. It's been a month. It's been a full it's month. It's been a month. And yep. we're being told probably for almost another month, but some counties are starting to let up. I know in Ventura County, um, they're starting to reopen some places gradually. Going through what you've been through mm-hmm. um, and and watching what's happening now and seeing how quickly it accelerated through your body has to give you some thoughts and some insights on how we should be handling this. I mean, I know you're not a doctor, but what, what's gone through your mind throughout this whole process? When I was in the ICU, it was, it, I mean, there was, there was a lot of equipment that kept me alive. 
right? I think I had something like 11 lines going into me. I had this bed that um, rotated, right? It was, it was, it would move like back and forth to keep fluids from settling in my lungs. Mm. So a lot of what the, you know, you're talking about the respiratory aspect of, of COVID, you know, I had acute respiratory 